So today we're going to be looking at the video micro by Rode. If you've been watching YouTube for any amount of time, you'll have seen lots of YouTubers with this on top of their camera. And it's a great little piece of kit. It doesn't require any batteries. If we were to do a simple unboxing, then when you do open the box, you just get all this stuff inside a little plastic container. And then within that, you've got all your paraphernalia. I mean, the basics of what you get inside the microphone is you get the microphone itself, you get the wind muff, you get this mount for it and you get this cable. Now one of the things I've seen about the cold shoe mount is that the screw that tightens it to it has actually got these little, I'm not sure if you can see that, but these little um, grooves within it just here and what you do is you attach the cable to that and it stops your microphone bouncing about like that on top of your camera once it's attached. And you might be thinking why are you getting one of these little microphones when I've got one of these? I currently use the Rode uh, Wireless Go 2 and I really like these mics. They're amazing, they come with two transmitters that attach to one receiver and with that, it runs wirelessly. They're great if you're doing even interview stuff like I do with some of my work where you give one person one of the receivers and the other the other and, and you end up being able to interview and it all goes directly into the camera. One of the things about these is it's really, really good in the wind. So you get these wind muffs that attach to these uh, dead cat things that actually work where they, they go in almost like a, you know, like a bayonet light bulb where you attach it and it stays on it doesn't come off and in Shetland winds a pretty big deal we have a lot of wind today it's 40 mile an hour wind on the, at the weekend it's meant to be 60 mile an hour winds and it is really really strong and, it, and you know wind noise and camera just absolutely destroys your audio but you might be thinking as I said why would you use one of these well what one of the, the things I do find about these is they can be a little bit like if you're going out, I suppose you could leave the battery on all the time, but to turn it on, turn it off, I'm also worried I lose these. So there are some scenarios where I just find that, I wonder if something like this would be easier to use. I wonder if it would be more convenient. These are great. They've got an audio track that actually records internally. Uh, this doesn't have that. So there is certainly an element of safety with this here that I won't get with this. But still, I feel the convenience factor might be good with this. And I saw it on special offer on Amazon the other day for $39.99. And I had a £30 Amazon gift voucher. So we're going to go down to the beach and see how this works in the Shetland wind. You can come, but you're not allowed to eat sheep poo, okay? Happy? Can I go to the beach? Gonna head down to St Ninian's Isle, which is one of the most famous beaches in Shetland. Pretty cool place. It's not that far from my house. It's only about maybe a 10 minute drive. Looks like we could get a little bit of a sunset tonight. And uh, I've been missing a few of the nice winter sunrises and sunsets recently just with work and not being able to go. More about that in a future video but we might actually get one tonight. It's a little cloudy, but there is a bit of color in the sky. We shall see. We might get something. That's where this fell apart. Whew. It is wild out there. I also got my feet wet from standing in the sea. I'm always a bit nervous being anywhere near the sea with my camera after, if any of you watched my very first video, then you'll know that I lost the camera to the sea because of a freak wave. Lights kind of go in the sky, hasn't quite lit up as I would have wanted it to. Still nice though, and uh, we'll go back and see if we've got anything to edit. We'll also find out how the audio's been through this because 
it has certainly the wind will have tested whether or not this is good now i've seen a lot of videos where this does work in the wind but it was just really really windy uh, down at st minion something this size is well the wind is always going to be blown into this and the wind was so strong that even the best of audio equipment would have struggled massively with that wind and so i think there are some scenarios where this is better than this however i still think for convenience and from what i've tried and testing this on my own this is still amazing anyway when we were down at st ninians i did manage to get a couple of pictures i wasn't overly happy the wind and the sand whipping up with the wind was absolutely battered in my face so i wasn't there for too long and plus the sun disappeared and it never really lit up the sky as I wanted. But here's one of the photos that I took and we're going to edit that just now. So if you're following along, there'll be a link for the photo in the description that you can download the raw file and follow along with this if you're using Lightroom on your iPad or your computer. But I have gone from this to this. As you can see, what I've done is I've taken a road and made that into a leading line that leads down to St Ninian's Beach and you've got the sunset in the background with the rocks of St Ninian's that you can see there. And so what I did was I've taken down the highlights, gives it a bit more definition in the clouds, and I've raised the shadow because as you can see beforehand, it was pretty dark. But you could have done uh, exposure bracketing, but honestly, it was so windy, there was no way that I was going to take different exposures and then blend them in later on. I don't have Photoshop, but I do have Affinity Photo on my iPad. So what you can do with that is that you can take the highlights from one photo, say, and the shadows from another photo, and you blend them together, increase the whites a bit, and took the blacks down. If you were to look at the color curves, then I increased the highlights, just a simple bit of an S curve, raised the blacks a little bit, and brought down the whites. I boosted the reds just because I thought that gave it a little bit more of a purpley feel to it. I quite like a purple tone. I think gradually I'm starting to get a little bit of a style of photo that I like. Everybody will eventually get their own style. And uh, mine is, seems to be a bit more of like pastely colors, uh, purpley tones in mine. So again, added a bit more of that took out a bit of the greens and the shadows because the grass was actually very bright green when i when i went to edit it and you'll see that from the the original although it's very dark but when you raise the shadows the the grass was quite bright green in this one here just added a bit of blues into the the mid tones as well going down to the color i, I again added a little bit more uh, magenta into the image and added a little bit of vibrance brought down the saturation a little bit the colors i uh, changed the orange here but more red and i took the greens down a little bit away from the kind of aqua colors and that's really it i didn't really do anything else to that when it comes to the effects I did add a little bit of clarity. I took down the dehaze, that gives it a bit more of a kind of dreamy look rather than just a really sharp, contrasty look to it. And I gave the image, I always give an image a little bit of a vignette. I think it draws your eye into the middle. When it comes to detail, I masked it quite a lot because you don't. I didn't want to sharpen every single part, but you just wanted a bit of detail on the edges. So by masking that, I'll show you what I did, it was at 86. So if I, as you can see, I have just added sharpening to just these edges here. I think that gives it a bit more definition in the right place. Didn't really need any noise taken out of it or anything like that. And that's all I did to this photo. St Ninian's is a stunning place. I'm gonna go back there when it's a little less windy. I'd recommend this. It's a, a great little microphone. I'd also recommend this one. Road stuff is really good. I suppose it depends on what your needs are. If you're gonna be out vlogging and you want to just talk to a microphone and it's not 40 mile an hour winds, this is certainly more convenient. I'd give that a try. However, if you're gonna be doing other stuff, if you're using a lens that's a bit, uh, a bit more telephoto, then you certainly can't use that mic. And if it's windy, I would recommend one of these. Or if you want a safety buffer, or if you're doing an interview, this one has a lot more use cases. But just for simply vlogging, give this a bash. 
on Amazon and special offer just now at $39.99. And if you get a £30 gift voucher from somebody nice like I did, then you'll be able to pick one up for pretty cheap too. Anyway, I'll see you next time on Shetland in 360. Have a great week. Thank you.